2021 COVID Innovation Challenge Award Ceremony. My name is Christy Suchu and I am the Program Director. First, I would like to thank our donors, Blake Hansen of Alturas Capital and Bobby Hansberger from the Hansberger Foundation. Next, a special thanks to the Public Affairs Section of the U.S. Embassy in Beirut, Lebanon, led by Hermelia Yefter, who is the Cultural Affairs Officer. And a big shout out to Dr. Jordan Sayers, who is Associate Professor of Operations Management at Lebanon American University. Together, she and I created a cross-cultural international class, where today I'm proud to say some of our winners are from this collaboration. And now some background information on the Kobe Innovation Challenge. We had about 248 students comprising of 61 teams who are competing for the $14,000 in prize money. We have six teams who will win $1,000 each. We have two teams in the plastics award section who will win $1,000 each. Two international teams who will win $500 each. A new award, the Dean's Choice Award, and four teams will win $500 each, and six teams from the Judges Recognition Award who will also win $500 each. And now I would like to introduce to you our Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Corbin Harp and Mr. Gage Josie. Take it away. Thank you, Christy, and welcome everybody. Good morning and happy Monday, almost Christmas finals week, I believe as well. So thank you for being here. My name is Corbin Harp. Um, during my time at Kobe, my normal job is to be the Director of Finance and Analytics. Um, that pairs nicely with being an MC for this, data analytics and talking an MC. So here I am, I love to be here. Um, thank you, Christy, for having me. Um, also, we have Gage Josie, Gage. Good morning, everyone. Uh, pleased to be here. I'm the Development Director for the College of Business and Economics, and I'm pleased to join you as the Master of Ceremony. Yes. So also, we will be going over the dream team that got has all of this built out, um, helped set this up. So Christy Sushu is the Program Director. Without her, this wouldn't be possible. She has been the brainchild of all this. This is our third year, so thank you, Christy, for doing all this. Jordan Sayers, um, our international affiliate over in Lebanon. Thank you, Jordan, for your work and bringing us to an international stage. Um, Marlena Boyce for the event services. She helped set up today's event. Um, without their help, we wouldn't be able to do this. Lorraine Hand, she is my right hand. Um, thank you, Lorraine, for everything you do. She will help be helping with payments for everybody um, that wins today, uh, along with myself. There's a little bit of work everybody will have to do to get paid, but we will do that. So Miranda Cotton is a judge coordinator. She helped us bring all the judges together and there was a record amount of judges this year. So thank you, Miranda. And myself, Corbin Hart. And the next slide, please. Uh, we continue with Alessandra Denning. She helped set this up as well. She um, really made sure we all showed up to meetings to get this going. Thank you very much, Alessandra. She did a lot. Um, Gage, our donor relations, also emceeing today with us. Peter McClowski over in, is an international judge in Covington University. Covington's been with doing this program with us for two years now. So thank you, Peter, for that. Kat Myers helped set this event up as well. So thank you, Kat. Sam Pence built all the graphics and all of the things that we're seeing in the um, event today and all the advertising. Also, Allison Wild, we wouldn't be able to do her with this without her. She is fantastic. So thank you, Allison, for your work. I'll pass it over to Gage now to introduce the judges, record amount of judges, as mentioned. Excellent. Thank you so much, Corbin. Uh, first, we just want to uh, extend a big thank you to our volunteer judges who uh, devoted a lot of time to review um, all of our submissions, and uh, we'll be recognizing those judges now. Uh, so on this first page, we had uh, Carmen Akabal, uh, Mike Asbury, uh, Joseph Bonacor, and Nicole Brown. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we had Jesse Cantor, Nicole Cundiff, Ali Dulul and Allie Daniels, Timothy Dunn, uh, Sam, Sam Elric, uh, Stephen Hyde, and Ruth Javey, uh, Paul Judge, Jeff Lingwell, Liam Maher, and Simon Mahler, 
Sean Mattingly, uh, Peter McCluskey, Brian McNatt, and Kent Newpert. Karen Nicholas, uh, Ian O'Donnell, Brian O'Morrow, and Susan Park. Tim Rastigar, Rick Ritter, Daniel Rush, and Andy Scoggin. Abess Tarhini, Mick Wiskirchen, Joanne Wood, and Hermila Yifter. Thank you so much to all of our judges. Uh, we really appreciate your devotion to, to working with our students and uh, recognizing them today. So I appreciate you. Uh, now it's my honor to introduce uh, the Dean of the College of Business and Economics, Mark Bannister. Mark, go ahead and take it away. Hey, thank you, Gage. First, I want to welcome everybody that's taking part in this competition, whether you are a competitor, whether you are a judge, or you've helped to organize this, or you're simply watching this today. This is an exciting event and it exemplifies our belief in Kobe that innovation is important. Peter Drucker wrote many years ago that it's the organization that does not innovate that is at risk, not the organization that takes on innovation and change. And I think that's true of so many uh, aspects of life that uh, uh, we are supportive of innovation in the college and we hope that uh, this competition uh, helps to uh, be a spark, helps to be a catalyst to innovation and that uh, it helps to prepare the students who are participating in this to be innovators as you go forward in your career. So thank you, everybody. I appreciate you being part of the competition today. And I'm excited to see our presentations. Thank you, Dean Lannister. And special thanks again uh, about your uh, being able to help us put this event on. We wouldn't be able to do it. So thank you for allowing the resources to continue to do this. Thank you. And it's now my pleasure to introduce to you the 2021 Kobe Inspiration Award. This is going to Nick Stapello. He is a current MBA grad at the College of Business and also a hardworking owner of Flashpoint Building System. Nick is doing everything we want to see out of a Kobe student and soon to be grad. You're doing great work, Nick. And please, I'm happy to present to you your plaque once we get it to you. So this will be yours. Um, now, please tell us a little bit more about what you're doing over at Flashpoint Building Systems. Thanks, Corbin. I'll go ahead and uh, is there a way to share my screen here, Corbin? You should have ability to. Yes, share. you can share your screen. It looks like it says you cannot share start screen share while the other participant is sharing. Stop sharing. Now you can do it. There we go. All righty. Everybody see that okay? Yes, we got it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Corbin. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Nick Stapello, and I am the co-owner of Flashpoint Building Systems here in Boise, Idaho. And I'm also a current MBA student at uh, Boise State University. I'd like to start uh, by thanking Professor Sichu, uh, the College of Business and Economics, uh, Dean Bannister, and the folks heading up the Venture College for uh, creating the opportunities that have allowed me to be sitting in front of you and speak to you today. Um, I, a little bit about my journey. Um, I earned my bachelor's degree in production and operations management. Um, some of you uh, know about the infamous school up north, but that's where I did that. Um, subsequently, I worked in the construction industry as a project manager uh, for almost a decade before deciding that uh, I wanted to pursue my MBA at Boise State. Uh, admittedly, I when I completed my undergraduate degree, I made an oath to myself that I was done with higher education. Um, at 22 years old, I, school wasn't exactly something I was excited by or fond of. Go figure. Um, I think that's the case for most people that age. But um, so I went into the workforce uh, and was part of many commercial construction projects in Seattle, uh, ranging from data center expansions 
the Class A high-rise office buildings, uh, and I loved every minute of it. Uh, it was an awesome experience that uh, I, it was just proved invaluable. Um, the only problem was having been born and raised in Boise, I found myself uh, trying to get back home at every opportunity. So in 2016, I picked up uh, and came back home where I worked uh, until 2020 for a large commercial contract contractor here locally uh, on a bunch of different public works projects in our local community, which was fulfilling as well. Um, as my career progressed though, I realized that I needed to differentiate myself among my peers. Uh, and that would mean that I had to break my promise to myself. Um, so in the summer of 2020, uh, in the height of a global pandemic, it seemed like a good idea to leave my established career and uh, go back to school. Uh, after all, what 30 year old doesn't want to be having family dinner where their grades are the primary uh, topic of conversation. But uh, so, while I did want to further my personal development uh, by acquiring my MBA, I also had something else in the works. Um, in the same month of enrolling at BSU, uh, my best friend and I embarked on building our startup company called Flashpoint Building Systems, where we coordinate and laser engrave building information directly onto the subfloor sheathing used for construction. Uh, the first MBA course I took was the Design Thinking and Strategic Management with Professor Sichu. And it was no picnic. Um, having been out of the academic game for what seemed like an eternity, it took a couple rounds in the rain to get back into the swing of things. Um, but eventually my plan came together perfectly uh, as that class coincided with all the pre-planning exercises that my business required to get established as a startup. Um, I used my education in parallel uh, with building my business to build a vest in, build in a vested interest in the content and how it could be applied to my own venture. So it proved invaluable and there's numerous tools I was exposed to in that course specifically that we still use in our strategy sessions today. So fast forward to this fall, uh, a year into the MBA program, my company was approaching the year mark as well. Um, and we got hit with a targeted advertisement for a competition being put on by the Venture College at BSU called Hacking for Home Building. We saw the opportunity as a win-win uh, regardless of what place we took, simply because we would get the needed exposure to boost awareness of what we're doing and how we were trying to change our industry. And it couldn't have been a better fit for our company for those reasons. So throughout the competition, uh, we were tasked with compiling, refining, and presenting a pitch to a panel of judges, similar uh, to the Kobe Innovation Challenge here. And uh, those judges ultimately decided who would advance to the top three and then who the top three would be awarded to. Um, so over the course of a month, we continually capitalized upon tools and exercises we had taken, or I had taken rather, from my experience in the MBA program uh, and applied them to our business, which ultimately uh, allowed us to take first place in the public track. So as far as the results uh, of that competition go, we, we were previously unaware uh, of the availability of the entrepreneurial resources in our community here local. The exposure uh, to those resources alone was tremendous, but along with that uh, exposure came awareness in the local community as well as across the country of who we are and what we do. Um, so we, we literally got phone calls from folks after winning uh, all the way from California to, to Maine. So that was pretty, pretty neat to have it go uh, through the roof over, overnight, if you will. Um, but during our year-end analysis uh, this month, we just finished up, um, we identified that our projected revenue growth is gonna be close to 300% of what it was this year. And we can solely attribute that to the exposure that we got during the Hacking for Home Building uh, competition. Admittedly, as a startup, uh, when nobody else is doing what you're doing, it's hard to model yourself after anybody. So you kind of got to beat uh, the streets and get in front of the right people. And this was an awesome platform uh, that BSU afforded to us to do that. Um, and honestly, it's a testament uh, to the legwork of the Venture College, as well as the dedication to the course development and implementation by the College of Business and Economic Staff. So um, all that being said, it, it has been a long road uh, to get where we find ourselves today. And it was filled with unexpected detours and opportunities that didn't pan out. Um, along with growing a business, the personal development through higher education isn't for the faint of heart. 
you really have to put your mind to it and and decide uh, wholeheartedly that you're going to execute and then execute on the plan. Um, so when it seemed like we didn't have enough hours in the day or nothing was according going according to our plans, I just always remembered this quote and I want to uh, share that with you today. Um, and this is by Calvin Coolidge. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan, press on, has solved and always will solve the problems of the human race. So with that, I leave you with that simple phrase, press on. Best of luck to you all in your endeavors. And thank you again to the College of Business Economics for this opportunity to speak with you today. Thank you, Nick. That was, it's awesome to see students and people taking on the risk and starting a business is not easy. We all know that. And it's very awesome to see you doing well um, at this point and continuing on. So thank you and good job. Keep thank up you. your good work. Yep. Now we will move on to the actual money. Time to award the hard cash. Yeah, money. We all want this. Let's congratulate our winners. So we will start now with um, the top awards for the undergraduate class. How this will work, they will be giving a presentation, one of the top, and then we'll announce two more of the top undergrads and then moving down. So we'll do a presentation, two more winners, presentation, so on. And I would love to pronounce the first winner that we'll be pre presenting today is wind turbine powered by cars. They will be the team members are Ellie, Lauren, Abed, Justin, and Caitlin, um, filling the gaps in normal electronic electricity produced while remaining eco friendly and safe to use. So can't wait to see this presentation. Oh, yes, sure. We'll start sharing. Hello, everyone. My name is Abed, and our group did the wind turbine powered car, powered by cars. So if you didn't know, uh, there are 940 million people uh, that lack access to electricity leaving these communities to suffer from food scarcity due to poor uh, storage and refrigeration in family homes and groceries. Uh, the higher likelihood of food poisoning creates bigger issues if these individuals experience dehydration. Moreover, there are 3 billion people globally also that lack uh, access to clean fuels for cooking. Uh, this lack of clean cooking access continues to pose a serious health and socioeconomic concerns. Uh, under current policies, the number of people without access would be 2.2 billion by 2030, creating a significant impact on health, environment, and gender equality. The rising uh, health issues among co communities put larger medical faculties in areas of blackout at risk. Uh, of failing to provide essential medical care or emergency care to their uh, patients. The existing competition trying to provide electricity to its customers either relies on fossil fuels, contributing to over 61% of global greenhouse gases, or they are not quite yet producing enough energy for customers to rely on steady electricity levels because they are not working on a large enough scale with their renewable sources. Our customer segment is focused on three things, which are healthcare, the, the grocery stores, and the government. We chose the healthcare because they are because they take care of patients through using machines and technological devices. We also chose the grocery stores since they provide people with their daily needs, such as food and basic supplies. And the government, because the government should provide citizens with and businesses with electricity to uh, to work and satisfy them. Now, moving on to the unique value proposition, our conventional utility supplied electricity averages about 10 cents per kilowatt hour. 
uh, the larger scales home around 877 kilowatt hours per month, but many homes could be powered by the 300 kilowatt hours, uh, which is what our vertical turbine can produce per month. Many of these vertical designs produce these fun functional amounts of electricity in areas that only average from four to nine mile per hour winds with high speeds ranging between 55 to 80 miles per hour winds. These turbines have a steady source of uh, high speed wind for 24 hours a day. Due to their smaller size and lower elevation, our vertical wind turbine uh, design and location are less likely to impact populations of birds and bats uh, than horizontal designs, as they will not be integrated in the, to their preferred habitat. Moving on to the next slide. There are several solutions brought forward for the implementation of our product. The first one, which is uh, traffic powered vertical turbines can provide sustainable electricity to healthcare centers, groceries, and citizens by combating energy poverty around the globe, uh, which helps less pollutants created by solid biomass, coal, kerosene, will enter the atmosphere, thus improving the population's air quality and lowering the damaging effects that humans have on Earth. Lee can carry on. Now, distinct, distinctive advantages. Due to the nature of wind turbines in inter history, the, the, the technology our team is using can be duplicated. Our product is rare in the fact that it not has been impl implemented in larger scales in terms of uh, wind number of turbines per acre. Then our distinct advantage lies in several factors. First of all, our product is a medium-sized vertical design that is non-reliant on specific climates. Then our product uh, takes advantage of unused uh, acreages around the highways. And then it is environmentally friendly. Although our, our product cannot solve an electricity crisis within an entire country, it will boost overall electricity production that does not have a negative impact on the planet. The, the key activities of the matrix. First of all, the electricity will be provided by public or, uh, or private grid. Then uh, we will partner with, an, with, an, with industries and universities and uh, investors in order to fund the project. And then uh, taking uh, we will take sections of the road in order to test and build our product. The channels, the turbines will be will direct will provide the grid and private or pro or private companies in, and then to the customers. First of all, uh, the grid it will directly provide new citizens with electricity, and the private company will sell uh, electricity to the customers that are subscribed to their services. And then the government should support the project, uh, the project and market it through social media platforms such as Facebook and the TVs in order uh, to expand our, in order to expand other countries. Then the cost structure and the revenue streams. The cost, the, the cost structure, the government, the project will cost around 2.6 to $4 million in order to set the turbines. Then uh, the customers will sign up uh, for 12 cents per kilowatt. And the revenue per turbine will be around 3,000 to 10,000 per year, depending on the size of and kilowatt of the capacity. In conclusion, our team has already consulted with experts, including mechanical engineer, engineer uh, Rob Carlson, who was able to provide extensive information and data about the performance and benefits of wind energy. Carlson stated that wind turbines uh, and most forms of alternative energy can provide the great source of power with a smaller uh, carbon footprint uh, than fossil fuel alternatives. After discussions with experts and conducting additional research, there is enough data that suggests that this, pro that this product is a global necessity. Thank you. Great work. That sounds like an awesome product. Um, you can see that everywhere down the road. It's cool, it doesn't take out any of the birds and things out there, which one of one of the main problems of huge wind turbines out there. So thank you and great work. And congratulations on winning. Now I would like to introduce the second top team for undergraduates. This would be Magnify Me, a 
item that would take prescription glass, uh, your prescription for glasses and put it into a mirror so you can help put on your makeup and contact lenses easier. Sounds like a great idea. Good job, Lisa, Caitlin, Trey, Doug, and Grace. Congratulations. They will not be presenting, so we can move on to the congratulations there. And our final thousand dollar undergraduate winner will be Quick Shop, an app to make shopping at your favorite store quicker than ever. Congratulations, Samir, Grace, Ashley, Amy, Allison, and Adam. Great job. I will now pass it over, congratulations as well, to Gage to introduce the top teams for the graduate side. Thanks so much, Corbin. We could go to the next slide. Um, so our first top team from the graduate level is going to be Simple Structures. Congratulations. And we're going to be hearing from this group. Um, the project that they came up with is an app-based housing company connect for, to connect first-time home buyers with contractors to develop affordable cargo container homes. Really, really neat idea. Um, the team consisted of Stephen, Kristen, Eric, and Jennifer. And we are going to be hearing from this team now. Right on. Hello. I will share and we'll just jump, jump in. All right. Well, thanks for the introduction. Um, as he just mentioned, Simple Structure is an app based housing company designed to connect first time home buyers with contractors who can help develop affordable cargo container built homes and simplify the overall process of homeownership. I'm sorry, give me one moment here. All right, so our company simplifies the path to homeownership for these individuals by bringing all aspects of the home building experience under one roof. From, from ideation and customization to financing and construction, Simple Structure bridges the gap from beginning to end. Designed for first time home buyers who have faced difficulty finding a home they like and can afford, Simple Structure uses market research to identify and address the main hurdles to home ownership. Based on ethnographic research, I'm sorry, give me one moment. There we go, sorry about that. So based on ethnographic research, we learned that there are very substantial variations in the home ownership experience depending on factors like purchase timing, holding period, and location. The app will first debut in the Pacific Northwest, taking advantage of the rapid population growth, the high cost of metropolitan housing in these areas, and the ample supply of land in these states. Simple Structure was developed to address our clients' most prominent needs through means such as prototyping and feedback as, as learned through the design thinking process. The United States is in the middle of a worsening housing crisis. Today, the cost of a home is increasing faster than wages in 80% of all US markets. In 2018, the National Low Income Housing Coalition discovered that a minimum wage earner could only afford a one bedroom apartment in 22 out of more than 3000 counties in the country. Nationwide, the affordability ratio was 4.5 in the first quarter of 2020. That is, first time home buyers could expect to see homes listed at about 4.5 times their income. With that ratio reaching up to 12 times their income in more metropolitan areas. The median home price in the fourth quarter of 2020 was $346,800. The average monthly rent for a one bedroom apartment in 2020 was $1,098 a month. Overall, the demand for housing exceeds the supply, which results in high prices. The cost of ownership has exceeded what many Americans can afford. In order to stabilize the housing market and appease America's appetite for home ownership, the barriers to new housing construction must be met. This chart further explores the high cost of home ownership in the United States by showing the number of years on average state residents must save before they can afford a home. Note the high wait times in the Pacific Northwest. 
Over four years of savings required in Idaho, over five in Montana, over seven in Washington, and a whopping 21 years in Oregon. Clearly, this market is ripe for disruption. Uh, market research was key for us at Simple Structure to identify and hone in on our key market. Our research showed that in 2020, approximately 38% of home buyers, or more than 2.5 million people, are between the ages of 22 to 39 years old with a median household income of about $90,000. Oops, sorry. Um, However, the average median income in the U.S. for individuals in the 22 to 39 age group is $52,200. Simple Structure will target home buyers in this age group in the Pacific Northwest initially that have a median income between $45,000 to $100,000. Capturing only 2 to 5% of this group would be 54,000 to 128,000 existing home buyers with potential to capture more thanks to our convenient service and low material prices. Um, so here, meet Josh, an example of Simple Structure's target audience. Josh is 32 and is a first-time home buyer. He is married and earns $85,000 per year as a network engineer. We want to provide Josh with the flexibility of a custom home with a low price tag he can afford. As anyone who has experienced home buying, or uh, as anybody who has experienced buying, selling, or searching for a home can tell you, it can be a painful experience. In fact, two in, two in five first-time home buyers report experiencing anxiety and feeling nervous throughout the entire experience. There are many tools and people that can guide you through the process, but they are not all in the same convenient location. At Simple Structure, we give you all the tools you need in one spot to support you through the home buying process. By using our simple smartphone app or website, you will be building your container home in no time. From financing approval to building your dream home, Simple Structure connects the dots and guides you from beginning to end. Simple Structure will provide home buyers and builders with three unique solutions they won't be able to find anywhere else. First, Simple Structure will provide a centralized tool to help those searching for an alternative affordable housing in the Pacific Northwest. Our app accomplishes this by connecting the user with local contractors and real estate agents who can help them select properties and home designs, all done within the app. Second, Simple Structure provides a unique and innovative solution to affordable housing by allowing the customer the ability to customize their cargo container with different features in our application, which then creates a digital blueprint. Third, Simple Structure provides a one-stop shop for your whole home buying and building experience. We will guide the home buyer through the entire home buying and construction process through the tools and support provided in our app. Traditionally, it takes home buyers and builders countless hours of research, multiple websites, and people to get them through the home buying and building process. We are now offering our service as a single resource to guide them to all of the steps that they'll need to go through. Due to high costs of living and a lower adjusted wages, it's more difficult for the general population to get what they need or want from a traditional style home. At Simple Structure, we wish to provide the opportunities for more individuals to realize their dream of being a homeowner in a whole new way. The client will start by getting pre-approved for a home loan. They'll then pick the number and size of the containers they'd like, browse various floor plans and finishes, and end by having a set of architectural plans drafted. Using our network of realtors and contractors, the plans will be sent to the realtor and contractor of the customer's choice. Next, the customer will choose from available Simple Structure selected key properties or work with the realtor to select a property of their choice. Contractors could be consulted and utilized to begin the permit approval process. In all, Simple Structure guides the customer through each step of this normally intimidating process through a user-friendly phone application. The three key metrics our value proposition requires is development and maintenance of the application, marketing and advertising to our clients, and customer relationships. Simple Structure is a technology platform, so we'll need to drive users to download our app. Our app will need to be user-friendly and widely available for all phone and computer systems. 
In order to attract potential clients to download our app, we'll do a social media campaign to target our ideal demographic and use referrals from collaborations with our local contractors and real estate agents. In order to reach our target audience in a wide and effective way, we'll need to depend on online marketing practices such as search engine optimization and digital marketing. These practices involve paying for targeted marketing, which would seek individuals on a number of different criteria, including their age, income, and their search history. Our proposition is to keep it simple and all inclusive for the customer, making the home buying experience a pleasurable one. The main channels Simple Structure uses to approach our target customers are through digital marketing, client research, and our app. These days, mobile versions of websites and applications are necessary for any business looking to build a loyal social following, steady revenue, and an overall simple and positive user experience. Our steps include identify, reach, branding, engage, and capture. We will need to leverage what we know of our target user base with ongoing market research on the demographics of those trying to enter the housing market. By understanding our target demo, we'll be able to better um, market our services to them specifically. Simple structure costs will come from three main areas with a potential fourth in the future. The first is the application development and maintenance, including but not limited to planning, design, features, infrastructure, the app administration, testing, and deployment. The second cost is the initial architect costs for four to six floor plans for our customers. The third is a small team to negotiate costs and maintain a realtor and contractor pool. And the fourth potential cost could be the development of a customer service center for all of the home buying questions um, and, and building questions. Simple Structure will have two main re revenue streams. The first is the application revenue. We'll have an all-inclusive fee of $400 to $800 for the full suite of services that includes access to all of our vendors, bl blueprints, and support for our a la carte options, depending on what our customers specifically require. Realtor and contractor fees will be the second revenue stream. We'll collect a small percentage of the traditional realtor and contractor fee as our secondary uh, method of revenue. In conclusion, there are many home buy buyers and builders that will not have the opportunity for home ownership with the traditional home model as it is today. Simple Structure will provide an affordable home ownership option for these individuals, as well as a trendy alternative to the traditional home. The easy to use application will eliminate many home buyers anxiety about their future home as they will have one location for the entire process with all the support that they need. We'll provide an avenue for home buyers to find an affordable, customizable and one stop location to build their dream home. As previously stated, we find our plan to capture two to 5% of the existing market within the first two to three years, along with the additional individuals that are priced out of the current market. We think this target demographic is significantly underserved and would do well by entering the housing market. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much, Jennifer and Steven, and congratulations once again. We're gonna go ahead and move on to our next uh, graduate winner. So our next graduate winner is Illumarail. And Illumarail is customer connection through confidence. Um, this team consisted of Steve, Melanie, Megan, and Monica. Congratulations, Illumarail. Next slide, please. Excellent. And our final graduate team that we want to recognize today is Hush. Uh, this is a really cool idea, wall art that reduces unwanted noise from outside the room. This team consisted of Felicia, KD, Justin, Austin, and Ashley. Congratulations to Hush. And uh, now we're going to move on to uh, one of our new tracks. And uh, this track was um, our plastics track. And we wanna take this opportunity to extend a special thank you to Bobby Hansberger, who felt passionate about this, uh, this topic and wanted to see some students come up with some uh, unique ideas to tackle this immense problem. 
Um, so we're going to recognize two teams today that each are winning $1,000. And our first team that we're going to be hearing from today uh, is EcoBoard. And EcoBoard is a plastic composite sheet that will reduce the environmental impacts of plastic and construction and creating a profitable new market. This team consisted of Lauren, Taylor, Stephen, Rashad, and Jacob. Go ahead and take it away, EcoBoard. Uh, Jacob, if you want to retry, um, it looks like you're unmuted, but we can't hear you. Not yet. Um, no, it still doesn't seem like we can hear you. Testing. Yep, now we got it. Hey. <laughs> Sorry about that. And just making sure you can see my screen. Yep, all looks great. All right. Thanks for bearing with me. Uh, so imagine for a moment your dream home. Uh, it might be a little craftsman, uh, it might be painted white with a red door, you have shutters on it, you purchase a piece of land uh, to build the home and your contractor now tells you the bad news. Lumber prices have skyrocketed because of COVID-19 and the budget you set is no longer anywhere near what it needs to be for this project to be completed. Uh, this is where EcoBoard comes in. This is going to be a single product that will help your wallet and the environment at the same time. EcoBoard is completed by Lauren, Taylor, Stephen, Prasad, and myself. So plastic is a huge issue, and while recycling programs have tried to fix the problem, there are simply too many barriers to success currently. Uh, methods of disposal uh, that are implemented include uh, some recycling programs and uh, burning plastic. However, uh, EcoBoard is going to allow for a safe way to transition plastic waste into a building material. There's a significant market for environmentally friendly or green building products um, that reduce the overall impact of construction. We wanna step into this opportunity to develop a product that curbs the financial burden of the current lumber market. Uh, EcoBoard product will take plastic waste that cannot be currently recycled and turn it into usable four by eight sheets of plastic uh, similar to plywood for home building. Now, there are two types of customer segments that EcoBoard will focus on. Uh, the first is with municipality markets. Uh, we had a case study we looked at where New York City was paying about $80 per ton to ship plastics away uh, in 2019. They would collect it and then they were also paying to have it discarded. EcoBoard would partner with municipalities and reuse that plastic. Uh, the second customer segment is the construction market. Demand for new homes is increasing and doesn't seem to be slowing anytime soon. Uh, the U.S. Census Bureau uh, recently showed that there was a housing shortage of over 5 million homes. Prices of wood have been fluctuating greatly as well uh, due to natural disasters, supply shortages, supply chain issues. So EcoBoard is going to add an alternative 
to the building supply market and hopefully stabilize prices. The main unique value proposition of EcoBoard is that it's an environmentally friendly and cost-effective alternative to sheets of plywood used in home construction. Also, manufacturing goods from recycled materials typically requires less energy um, than producing goods from raw materials. When products are made with less material, less energy is needed to extract, transport, and process raw materials. And lastly, EcoBoard is a durable, waterproof, heat resistant, and lighter weight solution to plywood. So we foresee EcoBoard differentiating itself in main, two main ways. Um, that is an abundance of plastic available and more favorable prices for customers. There's a lot of plastic waste available, as I've talked about. Um, in fact, the plastics manufacturing industry has grown faster than any other manufacturing industry in the US in the last few years. So you take the amount of plastic waste that's available uh, and you compare that with the high increase in lumber and you have an available material at an efficient cost. The second issue we're looking at is the current shortage of construction supplies in general. Uh, last year, lumber had a 250% increase um, and construction projects were delayed. Uh, we saw increased expenses accordingly. Uh, it's become a major issue. So you combine the current high construction costs with fluctuating lumber markets and not having a stable supply, and there's space for an alternative as well. When interviewing different project managers in this project, uh, they were really optimistic about the availability of our product and its reduced cost. And unlike lumber, environmental factors wouldn't, ish, uh, wouldn't have affected as much. One of the main advantages of our product is that it's made of plastic. Uh, it's not a new building material. There have been other things that have been made with plastic, but the recycling component will be unique. Um, the new and availability of plastic uh, will make sure that sudden price changes won't occur. Um, plastic is available in abundance and EcoBoard uses plastic uh, destined already for the landfill. Another advantage is the ability that we have to partnership with municipalities. This will allow EcoBoard a source of continuing material uh, and at the same time limit potential new entrants uh, since we would have those contracts already signed. It also has the advantage of a stronger supply chain uh, than the lumber industry, uh, since we'll be set up regionally in cities uh, and have our plants available there to actually manufacture the boards. To establish EcoBoard's presence, uh, our key activities will be to develop a strong public relations presence that instills the environmental impact of plastic waste and educates on the limited recycling that uh, uh, currently occurs. Our key activities will also include education about the positive influence of green building and how the selection of products could save construction teams money and time. To operate successfully, our organization will focus on the acquisition, distribution, and customers as key relationships to be built. For acquisition, we'll be building those relationships with municipalities, as I mentioned, uh, to ensure that we have the raw product available. Our distribution will include partnerships with construction vendors um, with an emphasis on green and sustainable building. And focusing on our customers will also be uh, important as we build that trust and uh, hopefully allow them to take that step to using our product. The channels that we're gonna look at uh, include acquiring plastic from the municipalities. Uh, we'll have to make sure that um, we're timing this well. You know, there might be current contracts, so we'll have to wait for uh, those to expire and move regionally across the US as those are set. Um, Second channel will be pressing plastic into four by eight boards that will have the same functionality as plywood sheets. And then we're ultimately gonna sell EcoBoard to home improvement vendors like Home Depot, Lowe's, um, at municipalities and through trade shows as well. 
So our target clients include uh, construction contractors, DIY homeowners, and sustainably focused builders. Um, our cost structure uh, is based on potential user interviews and market research. Uh, we have predicted there will be costs such as overhead, uh, including rent, utilities, uh, infrastructure, such as building our manufacturing plants, um, and then the equipment and maintenance and labor of those plants as well. We predict that 30% of our revenue will come from the municipality partnerships and 70% will be via sales of our eco board. For the municipality partnerships, um, we are planning to charge cities $100 per ton to collect their plastic. And once we manufacture those boards, we'll return a 10% kickback to them as a, an incentive to continue the contracts. Um, and it might encourage other cities to do the same. So in conclusion, plastics play a significant role in our society and waste gener generated at the end of the usage is inevitable. Um, our research has explored extensively the use of various recycled plastic waste for construction applications, and we've come up with EcoBoard, a concept which is a durable and alternative product uh, to plywood. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jacob, and congratulations again uh, to you and, and all of your teammates on that. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on to our second uh, winning team on the plastics track, and that team is House Salad Garden. Uh, this is a really unique idea. Uh, growing high yield organic produce while reducing food, plastic, and water waste. And uh, this was submitted by Jordan Packard. Congratulations to House Salad Garden. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to our top international teams, and Corbin's going to take it away. Thank you, Gage, and congratulations to everyone so far. Yes, we have two teams that will win $500 each. Um, these will be the international teams. And the first winner that we will be meeting and presenting today is Greenest. An app called MyLand provides resources and information by farmers and landowners. This is by Bushra and Ryan. Take it away. Congratulations, Greenest. Thank you, sir. So hello everyone, we are the Greenest. Our team is composed of two members. Myself, Bushra Abu Kansur, and my partner, Aya Mustafa. Uh, Bushra, can you go I ahead can... and share the slides? Yes. Just a second, I can't like... There we okay. go. Okay. Okay. Can you see my screen? That looks good. Yes. So we are trying to solve a problem related to farming. We are two girls from South Lebanon. So we came across many farmers who reported their problems, including our, our parents. Farmers are confronting the problem of non-growing crops due to several factors like weather conditions, soil type, air, water pollution, and many other factors. Well, this is a problem because resources are being, are being wasted, like money, time, and effort, and the agricultural income is being impacted. However, Factors are evolving and changing through time. This is why existing competitions are not solving these issues. It is necessary to mention that the agricultural income is known to be very important for every nation's economy. As highlighted in our survey that we conducted over Google Forms, more than 50 responses were obtained, but approximately 91% of them stated that the agricultural income and exports help and boost the economy, which reinforces the idea that the agricultural sector is essential. You may kindly use the link below to access the responses obtained on our survey. Nearly 75% of our respondents assured that they have a family member or a relative that practices farming, which is a good number to conclude that farming is a familiar and important job. Accordingly, for our customer segment, we are mainly targeting farmers who practice farming as a main job. However, our product can be used by everyone interested in farming and even landowners. 
Our product consists of a sensor planted in the soil with an upper part coming out in the air. The sensor is connected to an app on the farmer's phone that reports various updates and involves many features that can help farmers and landowners solve problems they have and even support them in their farming in general. So during our research, we found somehow similar products, yet no product included all the features combined in one app as we did. For example, in this picture, it is a tool that measures moisture level only which is one feature in our app. However, we added additional features that, that are not implemented before. So besides measuring moisture level and forecasting the weather, our app will be recognizing the soil type along with soil components. Accordingly, it will provide a list of compatible crops that suit the soil type with their respective revenues and harvesting seasons. Additionally, a list of agricultural consultants is stated to assist farmers in any inquiry they have. Also, Market suggestions will be supplied to help the user find near places where he can sell his produce or buy farming supplements and tools. Now you might be wondering why would somebody buy or switch to our product or service? Users might be interested in our app more because rather than having one app per problem, the user is finding all the solutions in our application. As you can see in the screenshot of our app prototype, all features are listed in one place and the user is free to choose what he or she needs help with each time. If you would like to check the full prototype, please follow the link below. What gives our app a distinctive advantage is that instead of downloading one app for each feature, the users will be downloading one app for all. Accordingly, they will be saving storage on their devices. Besides saving money, time on switching from one app to another and saving money on subscription fees. Moreover, while searching for similar products on Amazon, we found that they were focusing on one aspect only, as mentioned before, so the users were not very satisfied. Now about the key activities and metrics, we can do market research where we learn more about our users and study their knowledge level in technology. So if they will be able to use our app smoothly, especially that our users are usually elderly people, so they might not be very, very be very familiar with technology. Accordingly, our app will be with the least technological skills needed to use it, since the users are the center of the innovation process. Additionally, we seek business development by building relationships with partners and trying to find sponsors for advertisement and budgeting reasons. Indeed, there's always place for improvement, so we are open for new production techniques to improve our product. Now for the channels that can be used to deliver our innovation, we can do television ads if sponsorship was found because this channel is expensive to use. Furthermore, direct contact with farmers within reunions and gatherings would be the most cost effective channel because it's a place where all farmers are gathered. So it is easy to deliver it to them with the least possible costs. For example, in Lebanon, there is the syndicate of farmer, which is a place where all people with the same profession, in this case, farming are registered. As for the best channel, our innovation can be delivered through ads on social media platforms, such as Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, since their impact is very wide and the delivery is easier to accomplish. As for the, for the last channel that can be used, we can distribute brochures that explain our product, since as mentioned before, our users may not be familiar with technology to know about the app through social media. Now for the costs estimation and revenue streams, Regardless of the sensor price, the app will offer three bundles. The first one would be a free subscription in the app, which includes the basic features such as recognizing the soil type, forecasting the weather, and a list of agricultural consultants and experts. The second bundle will allow the users to go premium, where they will benefit from extra features such as knowing which crops are compatible for the soil type, and this will be for $2.5 per month. As for the golden users, they will get the best of everything, where the app will offer the full features mentioned above, mentioned above besides the list of markets we talked about earlier. This bundle will be for $4 per month. Therefore, our revenues will be collected from subscription fees, ad, fees ads, and the sensor price. As a conclusion, we would like to contact a similar company, which is IO3, regarding the technical implementation of our app. 
And for next steps and improvements, we desire adding additional features after testing our prototype. Thank you. And if you would like to know more about our innovation, please contact us through the email addresses that appear on the screen. Thank you so much. Awesome and great job. Sounds like a wonderful product and wishing you the best on keeping that going. So good job. And congratulations. And our final international team and of one today is by them for them by Lean and Ream. And this is an application that allows a platform for small businesses um, selling products and services to compete against international and big business. So it sounds like an awesome platform for small businesses. So good job, Lean and Ream. Congratulations. We will now be announcing the Dean's Choice Award, which again, this is a new award this year, um, going to the four teams that produced something that the Dean liked. Um, so this is gonna be $500 for each team. And the first winner for this is Vitram Valis. I, I think I said that right. right. Um, and winners here are Brandarla, Kate, Chad, Silvano, and Anthony. Congratulations, this is a system of collecting, recycling, and re reusing local glass. Congratulations on your Dean's Award. The next one is Sidekick, or sorry, excuse me, Stick Tracks, a sticker that helps you keep track of things. Elliot, Taylor, Tanner, Sophie, and Brandon. Congratulations. Our third award, and that's going to a graduate team, a rejuvenation station a park designed to promote physical, mental, emotional, and social wellness among senior citizens. Uh, Andrew, Deborah, Joel, and Armanzi. Sorry if I mispronounced mispronounce that. And our final Dean's winner will be going to Smartwatch Health Monitor, a virtual caring smartwatch that helps children promote parents' health from afar. This is um, Hubble, Marim, and Chalice. And congratulations to our four Dean's winners. Um, there you go, congrats. And our final awards will be presented at the Judge's Choice Awards. Gage, you can take it from there. Thank you, Corbin. So this is gonna be our last award for the day. Um, and we're gonna be recognizing six teams for the Judge's Choice Awards. This is gonna consist of three graduate teams and three undergraduate teams. Next slide, please. So our first winner, uh, Life Flight Network Easy Button. Um, this product enables long-term care facilities to arrange quick, easy, and efficient emergency transport of patients to a hospital. This team consists of Brooke, Ben, Lena, and Elise. Congratulations. Our next judge's choice award goes to an undergraduate team, Sightseer. Um, this team consists of Andrew, Deborah, and Isaiah. And Sightseer is um, here to change the tide of construction site thefts by keeping watch over the site that matters to you. Congratulations, Sightseer. Our next Judge's Choice Award is going to a graduate team, InfraRange. This is a new type of oven that updates extremely outdated technology for the new millennia. And this team consisted of Jenna, Brandon, Matthew, and Marcus. Congratulations to InfraRange. Our next Judge's Choice Award is an undergraduate team going to Guardian by Your Side. And this is an updated campus safety app. Um, this team consisted of Isaac, Ariel, and Julie. Congratulations. Our next Judge's Choice Award is going to a graduate team, Healthy at Home. This team was Jacob, Sarah, another Sarah, Julie, and Sean. And um, this product was an innovative new remote monitoring technology for senior citizen safety and comfort. Congratulations. And our final Judge's Choice Award. This is an undergraduate team, the Alzheimer's app. This is an application to help Alzheimer patients gain autonomy, uh, which is a really, really cool idea. And this team consisted of Patricia, Nicholas, Marianne, and Jamie. 
Congratulations to the Alzheimer's app. Again, congratulations to all of our judges, uh, choice winners, and just wanna recognize all the teams that, that were recognized today um, and won these awards. Um, but for all the students that participate in this challenge, uh, we really just wanna say thank you and uh, great job. Yes, congratulations, everybody. We will be sending an email out to all of the winners. Um, you will want to follow this email. You're going to need to do a, um, there'll be a link there for payment works and you'll need to fill this information out so we can get the process of getting you paid um, going. So you will need to fill out this payment works information when we send this email out. Do not miss that. If you do miss that, we cannot pay you. So please fill out that, that email will be coming from Lorraine and myself. So watch out for that. And if you have any questions whatsoever on your payments, feel free to email me. Um, it's corbinharp at boisestate.edu. So uh, it might take about being the holiday season, I would expect payments in January at this point, potentially February. I hope not, but potentially February. So we will keep an eye out. So and thank you, everybody. That is the end.